Okay, so let's open the hood. All right, so the other day I was at the mechanics getting a bunch of stuff done. And funny thing we noticed is this expansion tank cap. This is how meticulous my mechanic is. He checks everything. He pulls up the expansion tank cap, right? And it's really weird because there's one O-ring left and it's not really smooth on this cap, right? So it looks like something fell off. So then we looked at a picture of what an expansion tank cap should look like. And there's actually a second O-ring and a piece of plastic that holds all of this together, right? So if you look at my original one, you can see that this plastic piece that holds the second O-ring together had broken off. You can see how it's missing here. So the second O-ring, as soon as you pull the tank cap off, the O-ring falls out. So let me see if I can fish it out. Let's see, I can actually see it right here. If I did. Anyways. Because this part of the tank cap fell off, you can see how easy it is for this O-ring to just slide out while it's in there. So it's really strange. So yeah, I bought a new tank cap. So I, I don't know how often these break off and how weak this plastic is, but it definitely broke off on my stock one. So I bought a new Molly part. Looks exactly the same as the original, except it has the plastic that'll keep that O-ring in place. What's funny is the stock O-rings are really flat and the Molly is slightly rounded. I don't know if these went flat over time, but I want to say they were probably always flat. They appear that way. Now I'm gonna go wash, wash up my hands. The other thing I noticed recently is this antenna grommet. The rubber disintegrated and it's completely fallen off, so I decided to buy an antenna delete and I'll be putting that on today. Now, going from the antenna, looks like I need to remove two clips inside. So I don't know if that shows very well in the video, but there's a clip here that turns and it just popped right out like that. And then there's a clip here. I'm gonna use a clip remover tool for that one. I'm gonna use this guy. You know, it has kind of some sharp edges, so I always have it wrapped in electrical tape so that it doesn't scratch anything, but I don't think I'll be damaging anything in the Z3. So let me get that out. So these are just like standard automotive clips. I don't even know if this is stock that came with the car. I mean, it's a 20 year old car, right? So anyways, here are the two clips holding that piece together. Let me see if I can just pull it out. Oh, looks like I need to, it looks like I need to unscrew this panel for the tail light in order to get that carpet out. So let me see. Easy enough. So we had two clips and this panel for the tail light. Okay, just got that out. And now I should be able to access the antenna, right? So there's the antenna assembly. It looks like I can just unscrew it out and yank the whole assembly down and out. So I'm gonna try that. So this entire carpet won't come out unless I take the tool tray out from the bottom. I think I'm just gonna leave it and just pull it down. Let's see. That looks to be about eight millimeters. Nope. So I think it's a 10 millimeter. So just so you can see, I've removed the nut and then there's a little one. I think that one's the ground wire. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that little one. It's a seven millimeter. So I got this guy out. And it was sitting in this sleeve right here. So you can see that. I mean, you can already see that the antenna is removed, right? But I want to take it completely out. So what happened was 
I took the antenna out, pulled it out, and the rubber grommet, whatever was left of it, it just kind of fell in. So it's gone now. I, I don't think I can ever reach it. It's not magnetic or anything, so I can't like grab it easily. I certainly can't see it. So I think it's sitting down on the bottom here somewhere. I should probably play it safe since I don't know anything about electronics. And to avoid a short, I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure all the wires are really isolated. Like this is a power wire. So I don't, I'm pretty sure that this one gets 12 volts when the car is on, so I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap it up. And again, I don't know anything about electronics. I'm not gonna pretend to know, but I wanna make sure that this 12 volt source doesn't mess anything up inside the trunk. So I'm just taping it together. Let me see. So here's the rubber grommet. Let's see how it fits. So this is designed for an E30 or E36 BMW. You can see it has these little tabs to hold on to the metal. Let's see how it fits here. A little bit closer. And oh, that's it. It just pops right into place. That actually looks pretty good. So here it is with the trunk closed. Oh, that antenna delete looks pretty clean, huh? I'm probably gonna get a Bluetooth enabled head, uh, head unit at some point. But a lot of them are out of stock right now because of the supply chain issues and chip shortage and all that. So I'll just have to wait to get one. I have these two fasteners to put back in. So there goes the first one. Second one. So here we go. We're back to stock in the trunk. Got rid of the antenna. And hopefully this one lasts a few years. We'll find out. If it doesn't, I'll guess, I guess I'll just buy another one. It's fine. And here's the screw, the sleeve, and the antenna that I'm throwing out. There's a little bit of rust on it. I wonder if it's been exposed to water, or if it's just normal for it to rust this much. Maybe it was exposed to some water, but I don't know. This car's been garaged its whole life, so I'm kind of surprised to see that. Anyways, that's it. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us. Bye.